You just started your fitness journey and it is amazing. You are addicted to the gym lifestyle, but for some reason, you keep making mistakes that cost you time and gains. You go to the gym, but no longer worry about falling victim to gym mistakes because now you are equipped with more knowledge than you've ever had before and have saved yourself so many gains lost and time. To learn from your mistakes is smart, but to learn from other people's mistakes is very wise. Considering I have been lifting since I was 15, I have made so many mistakes in the gym, costing me so many gains and time lost. But I'm here to tell you some of my mistakes so you don't fall victim to them. So this is my biggest gym mistakes and advice on what to do instead of them. Number one is training abs once you start cutting and are able to see your abs. This is a huge mistake and for me, it I kept doing it. You should be doing very intense ab training during your bulk because that is when the muscle is built. Just because you are starting to see your abs during your cut doesn't mean you start working harder on them. You can't grow muscle in a cut. So it is this pointless thing you are doing. When cutting, it is good to train the abs to keep the actual muscle. But to grow the actual muscle now that you are able to see it is very flawed because you should be doing that when you are bulking. And so I switched it up this time and in my lean bulk, I started training my abs a lot. And now when I'm cutting, my abs are a lot bigger and blockier, which I really want. To. Number two, the one that I fell victim to for the majority of my lifting life. I was cutting for way too long. You're always here, you need to preserve the muscle. But if you are not 100% committed to your diet, you shouldn't be cutting. You are just wasting time. That time that you could be spending in a lean bulk or just maintaining your current physique and lifting weights and actually gaining muscle, you are wasting it by going into a cut half ass. You should be fully prepared and devoted to a cut for a set period of time. And if you are prolonging that and you aren't really getting anything out of it, you should just go back to a lean bulk. I struggled to listen to this advice when I was younger and I paid for it. I spent so long with no gains, all this time lifting where I could have been twice my size. But I was just so obsessed with getting abs. I was so obsessed with being ripped. You can still get ripped, but have a set period of time where you devote your life towards getting it. And if you do not do this, you would just go on a six month cut and waste so much time. Do not cut forever. I think they call it a forever cutter or forever shredder. If you are not committed to your cut 100%, do not cut or cut to a reasonable size and then stop. Three to six months, even then, I wouldn't even do it for that long. Completely drop the idea of cutting if you are not going to be disciplined outside of it. If you are not gonna go into a lean bulk out of it, then just forget about it. You are going to waste your time. You are going to lose muscle for no reason just because you are undisciplined. Number three, working out for too long. This is an interesting topic, all right? You see your favorite bodybuilders and you want to do the exact same workouts they're doing. But what you need to realize is most of them aren't natural. I'm not saying that in a way to throw shade at them, but you as a natural lifter cannot lift to the extent they are. When we lift beyond an hour, our testosterone starts to drop. So to optimize testosterone, as a natural lifter, you should be lifting between 45 minutes to an hour. Yes, I do go over this because I do enjoy lifting, but I try to stay within the one hour mark. When I go after and do my cardio, I don't really count that in. But yes, try to do 45 minutes to an hour. And you, if you can't fit your workout in that time, just think maybe your workout is a bit too big for a natural lifter to be doing. If I am not mistaken, it is 22 to 20 sets per week you should be training per muscle. And if, and if you are going over that as a natural lifter, you're not doing yourself any good. Number four, always hitting failure. Now this is a very common one and you've probably heard this before, but what really is happening when you're always hitting failure? When you are hitting failure all the time, you are frying your CNS, your central nervous system. And you might be asking, why does this matter? Your central nervous system basically controls your hormones, your mood, your basically, Everything you are feeling, it is controlled. And when you push failure for a bit too long, you go into a state of overtrained and your body goes into a survival state. It's trying to survive instead of grow, it's trying to survive and keep you alive. And when you are constantly pushing the body to failure, you are putting the body into a survival state and it's not gonna really be optimal for growth. It's not gonna be optimal for bodybuilding. This is why you should learn about RPEs and try to fit in training where you know how far you are pushing your body. You should not be training at an RPE 10 unless there is a certain lift every now and then. And you might be saying while watching this, oh, I've done multiple training sessions at failure and I feel fine. 
your body could probably handle it for up to like four weeks. I've uh, That's what I've experienced. On a one main lift, if I'm hitting failure every single set, I can last up to four weeks, but then I have a severe crash after. So keep in mind to not be hitting failure all the time. These, it's It seems fun and there is a time and place for it. And as you become more experienced, you will know where that time and place is. Number five, and we've all fallen victim for this one, is no workout program. You are going into the gym and you're basing your workout on your mood and your energy level, which is so inconsistent and your gains will not be consistent whatsoever. You have no way of tracking how good you are going because you are just lifting as you go. This is fine between programs. I do this myself when I go from a lifting program to a bodybuilding program and in between it, I will have like two to four weeks of just having fun. I'll do my favorite lifts, I'll do whatever, that's fine. But when you do this for the longest time, when you do this for years, on end, you end up with very, very shit workouts. You think they're good, but what you could be doing is having a commitment to a program that allows you to have consistent discipline no matter what your energy levels are at. I go into the gym and when I have a set workout plan, I know I'm going to achieve it no matter how shit I feel. Versus when I go into the gym with no workout plan, if I am not feeling it that day, I will kind of convince myself and talk myself out of certain exercises. I'll be like, nah, it's all right, I'll do three sets for this one. Versus when you have a program, you are committed to it. Even if you feel like you're about to vomit, you really want to get it done. And sometimes if you're not feeling the greatest in a workout plan, you will be fine to be like, okay, maybe I should stop now. But you would do it less frequently than a person who is not doing a workout program whatsoever. So yes, try to find yourself a workout pro program. Try to build yourself a workout program. There is multiple YouTube videos teaching you how to do it. That is my five gym mistakes that have affected me a lot. I'm going to make a lot more videos like this because five isn't enough. You are going to make so many more mistakes than five. There is hundreds of mistakes I've made which I should be covering. Let me know in the comments below what is your worst mistake you've ever done because I'm interested to know. Hit the subscribe button and like button because it really does show you like these videos. And press this video here and I hope you have a great day.